everyone. This is Jonas from the 40 Guard Labs team. And today I would like to talk about the ancient Tesla malware. We just released this outbreak alert, which you can see here. And there's a very good reason for that. Ancient Tesla is a powerful, very easy to use form of a spyware. A spyware is a malicious software, which ends up on your computer and it steals sensitive information. For example, it checks out your different kind of browsers, what kind of passwords are stored in there. It logs every single keystroke which you type on your computer, especially when you log into your social media accounts or your email account. It copies clipboard data and collects images from victims' computers. Usually all of this information is being bundled and then being sold in underground forums. And very, very often when we look at current cyber attacks, attackers, they gain access to victims' organizations via these credentials. We call this credential stuffing. So this is very valuable information for attackers to have, and it's being traded on the underground on a daily basis. Now, in order for all of this to work, a lot of things need to be in line, though. So first of all, the ancient Tesla malware is usually being crafted by attackers and then being sent towards their victims. And we can see this here in our kill chain. So the outbreak alert really provides you a good overview about what kind of steps are involved in that specific attack and what can you do on a defensive side to prepare yourself accordingly. Because this specific malware is abusing specific vulnerabilities. And these vulnerabilities, as you can see in here, they are related to Microsoft Office vulnerabilities back from 2017 and 2018. So very old vulnerabilities, which means these systems probably haven't been patched properly since many, many years. But cyber criminals wouldn't go against these vulnerabilities if they wouldn't be successful, because the vast majority of these groups, they operate like businesses, and for them, it's about return of investment. So if they wouldn't see success in this kind of attack, they wouldn't do it. They would do something else, because they're not here to waste their time. Now. Let's talk a little bit about the specific attack. So as you can see, the vulnerability is part of Microsoft Office package. And you can see here our telemetry data. So our IPS signatures are capturing around 3,000 logs, events, attacks every single day regarding that specific vulnerability. Now, as you can imagine, this raises a lot of uncertainty for people on the defensive side, and they want to know what you can do to protect yourself against. So that's why we provide this outbreak alert. Now, you see a little bit of history in here. It was first time discovered in 2014. It developed over time. It shows the capabilities of what kind of browsers and software on your computer is being abused and steals the credentials from. But what is really important to understand is that the latest developments are very, very different from 2014. Because like every software, malware as well develops over time. It becomes more stealthier, which means it has capability to pipe out security layers. It adds more features in order to keep up with modern day computers, et cetera, et cetera. Now, for us on a defensive side, it's really important to understand what can we do against it. And there are multiple steps involved. First of all, protection. That's usually where we start because we need to filter the attack so it cannot even end up on our system. And there are multiple steps in the kill chain involved. So an attacker would usually do some reconnaissance first and then some weaponization steps. We cannot stop the weaponization here, of course, because the attacker is doing that on his own computer and we don't have our software installed on his computer. Of so, but what we can do is we can stop the delivery because even if the attacker has his weapon prepared, his malware is ready, and now he needs to find a way to bring this malware towards his potential victim. And he has a lot of ways to do that. He could use a phishing attack, for example, send it via email, or he could find a vulnerable application where he get access to an environment and then install, or install the malware manually. And as you can see on here, the attack surface is quite big. So it's really important for you as well that you understand how does my attack surface look like and what can I do then to protect against my whole attack surface? And there's no silver bullet. There's not just one single piece of software which you can install and you're good. That's not how cybersecurity works, unfortunately. But what we provide here is 
a different way is to the, stop the delivery from an antivirus point of view, which means we stop the malware itself. And you see the kind of databases which are required in the specific solution to detect this attack. Similarly, if you, if you want to block it on a spam level, we have 40, 40 mail in place, for example, which already can intercept the email and will not even deliver it to the potential victim. But what I like to focus on is, is on the root cause. So the, the malware abuses a specific vulnerability in Microsoft Office. And if this vulnerability is not there, the malware cannot successfully execute. So for the client, this is a great tool to understand what is actually the tech surface of my specific computer. For example, on, on your Windows computer, you might have a lot of software installed. Is that software up to date? Do, does it have vulnerabilities? And 40 client is, is, is here for you to really understand what software is out of date, for example, Microsoft Office. And then we can patch this kind of software so the malware will not be successful, even though it would end up on your computer. There's also some AV pre-filtering and behavior detection. 40 Sandbox is a great tool here because it doesn't look just on specific signatures, which can be easily changed if the attacker knows what he's doing but he looks at the behavior. And behavior is much, much more difficult to bypass for attackers because we don't just look on static signatures. What we actually do is, is what is this malware trying to achieve? And if we see suspicious behavior, like for example, collecting your keystrokes and then sending it to an IP address, this is not something which we would like to have in our environment. So we block that, of course. There are other solutions in place, like for example, for the EDR, um, you can click on that, for example, and you will, get more information, but also you will get some specific um, um, insights for threat coverage, how, for example, 40 EDR can protect against the Asian Tesla malware. So we released the block here in the past. Now, the exploitation phase, again, this is more about the vulnerability itself. So we talked before about antivirus, which means stop the virus itself. The exploitation would be against the vulnerability. So here we focus very heavily on the Microsoft vulnerability, and again, there are different solutions in place, which can have like something which we call a virtual patching in place. So even if the endpoint is vulnerable, the solution before can pre prevent this kind of um, exploitation. Now, protection is really important, don't get me wrong, but detection might be even more important because attackers usually find a way into specific networks one way or another if they have enough resources and time available. Now, th there are cases where people bring their own hardware into their corporate environments and they're already infected from their home networks. So we really understand what happens during the detection part because a cyber attack is not something which happens in one second and everything is achieved. It's, it's like a normal attack. It takes time. It takes days, sometimes weeks, even months. And during the detection, we can really understand what is happening in our network. For example, if you do some threat hunting and you look at 4D Analyzer or in 4D EDR, we can see specific behavior happening in our network. For example, uh, scanning keystrokes, exfiltration of information. Um, if we know the IP addresses, which are part of, um, of this whole campaign, we can block that kind of infrastructure so the attacker is not capable to even exfiltrate the information. We have a SIEM in place. Um, you can even add um, SOC as a service, et cetera. Now, all this kind of information we provide you with the 40 a 40 net uh, 40 guard outbreak detection service which is really important for you to have in your environment because usually these attacks we are collecting so much data from all over the world and we can anticipate what kind of attacks are trending these days and with this kind of information you can really prepare yourself against attacks which are happening right now even though the malware is from many many years ago now we also want to be able to respond because if we pro if we uh, protect against it and detect it we still need to do something in case it infected one of our clients in our network. So here we have different kinds of solutions in place. You can either use 40 XDR for automated response, or also if you feel, wait a minute, it impacted my network. I want to know how this actually happened because just cleaning everything up and focusing on the symptoms is probably not as good as really focusing on the root cause where you want to know how did this malware even access my environment because if you just clean up, there's a very high chance someone will actually get access to your network again and maybe even install something which causes more problems. So we have incident response services in place, um, but also our 40 recon team has capabilities 
to really understand what, for example, kind of credentials from your organization is being traded on the dark net. Then for recovery, it's um, we have different kind of processes in place as well. For example, knock sock training is very important. Uh, user awareness is also something which I like to highlight as well, because in the end, cybersecurity is a team sport and everyone needs to be aware of what happens. Um, but even if something happens and someone clicks on a phishing link, we still need to have security so security solution in place to stop this kind of attack. And then of course, identifying potential threats are very important as well. I love the security rating. I have it running here at home myself and all of my devices I have way too many IP addresses in my home network, but that's a completely different story. But the security rating gives me a super good overview about what kind of devices do I have detected in my network and what kind of operating system are they running? What kind of software is running? Is it out of date? And it really makes my life easier to understand what is actually potentially being exploited in my network because it just lacks proper vulnerability management. Now, there's so much more information in here. And especially I would like to highlight this blog because we just released it a couple of days ago and it really is a deep dive into the most current attack with ancient Tesla malware, which has been adapting over time. So this is the newest malware which we found, um, which is heavily being abused in phishing campaigns right now. And as you can see, we see an email, we see the vulnerability. So the attacker uh, changes the spreadsheet and customizes it with some social engineering attack. And for the technical guys, we also have the assembly analysis here. We even provide the IOCs at the bottom. So everything you need to know regarding the ancient Tesla malware attack, you can find with this specific outbreak alert. Thanks so much for tuning in. Again, my name is Jonas, and I'll see you next time.